We see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. Live from the auditorium of the Mount Calvary Pentecostal Church and directly to you, our radio audience, is the Hour of Pentecost. You're listening to radio station WBBW. Here where baptized believers worship 1240 on your AM dial. This is the Mount Calvary Pentecostal Church, located at 1812 Oak Hill Avenue, right here in Youngstown, Ohio. It's where Dr. Norman L. Wagner is pastor, and Jesus is God. We invite you to join us here at the Mount Calvary Pentecostal Church, where we want you to know, as we know, that the name of Jesus is above every name, and his glory indeed transcends the heavens and the earth. Yes, my friend, we extend this invitation to you, to you as and especially to you, for it's been said in words and shown indeed that you belong here with us at Mount Calvary.
rise before the Lord we want you to know as we know that there is but one Lord and there is but one faith and there's only one baptism It's in the name of Jesus. St. Paul declares that at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. And every tongue confess. Let all the hands be raised before him. The name of Jesus. Give God a hand praise tonight. Jesus is coming soon. It may be morn. It may be night or noon. But Jesus is coming soon. I've got a word of the Lord. A word from the Lord. I've got a word from the Lord. I've got a word from the Lord. I want to say this to you. There are many folk that can't shout when they don't see a sign. But I heard the Lord say in Kings, he explained to us that the sign would be no sign. The sign would be no sign. When there is no sign, that is the sign. <laughs> he said, just dig. Just dig. Every place you dig, I'm going to fill it with water. He said, don't look for a sign. Don't. When there is no sign, that will be the sign that I'm going to keep my word. I wish somebody had praised him here. I want to tell you something. 
It is in the seventh chapter of the book of Daniel. I'm as serious as I can be. Listen. I didn't look for this text. God told me. At this hour. You shall preach this word. Kusha. And I had a thought in my mind, I wasn't getting something clear, I could, couldn't hear it just like I wanted to. But I got all of it, but the last word, he said, you got to change the last word, this is the last word. It's at this hour. At this hour. Glory to God. May I tell you that it was on April the 30th that we as Americans entered into a new era. Many years ago, this is the day that the first president of the United States was inaugurated. You'll get it after a while. It was a new era, a new time for America. It was a new time. There was none before this, in this kind of leadership. Daniel 7. Follow clear, carefully what the Lord has said. I'm going to call out the verses he gave me. Daniel 7, 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the ancient of days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and his hair of his head like the pure wool his throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire verse 11 i beheld then because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake i beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. Verse 22. Until the ancient of days came and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High. And the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Verse 27, and the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. Hitherto is the end of the matter. And all the people said. Tonight's message, I can't even listen, listen to me. There are times the preacher has to search to know what to preach. God told me some time ago when the amen is said on the service the last Sunday in April you will have arrived at the end of an era and all he wants us to do is obey what he has said now this is not for the physical church building, son. This is a message for the saints of the Most High. God said, Verlene, get a hold to it. Get a hold of what I'm saying. This is for your house. Listen to me now. Brogdon, for your house, Elvin. You got to hear what I'm saying here. Glenn, it's for your house. Now, I'm not here trying to encourage somebody. God said this, Connie, at the end of the 30th of April, tell the saints 
they will have arrived to the end of an era that's what I planned to preach and God said no 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 it's the end of the matter now all of you all who make journals I want you to go home and do it when I write this in your journal write it in your Bible write it listen to me now I'm not trying to encourage you this God you have arrived at the end of the matter put the end of the matter and then put period and make your period big make a circle around it period 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 no more crying about what you've been through this is the end of the matter this is the end of the matter this is the end worship him somebody now oh God we come asking and requesting that your will would be wrought in our lives enter us into that fourth dimension let thy kingdom come, Lord, that we may be found doing the will of God. We praise you for every instance that the devil tries, for every test, every tribulation, for it's brought us to this point of victory. And we thank you, Lord God, that you have chosen us to be the saints here in the city of God. When we consider, Lord, that Satan has tried with all of his power and all of the spiritual forces of hell to come against the saints and the city of God, we praise you just as it's been prophesied, Lord, that when Satan is loosed from his 1,000 years of rest and gathers all of the forces of hell against the city of God, the beloved city, you declare that the fire of God came down and consumed them all. We praise you that at the end of this message that the consumption, the end of the devil, the forces, the power that has tried to prevail is over. And we thank you, Lord, that it's the end of the matter. In Jesus' name, amen. The end of the matter. The prophetic word of the Lord is illustrated dynamically through four prophetic men. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Daniel. Isaiah speaks of the kingship of our Lord Jesus. Jeremiah speaks of judgment to the offenders. The Lord, the righteous judge. yet delivers his people. Ezekiel speaks of the work of the ministry of Jesus Christ. Daniel will speak of timing, especially the latter time. Now you will not read that in a book or in a commentary. That is, like many things I share with you, the synthesis of the matter of trying to cause you to comprehend the message of four men. There are two prophets who should be read together. Ezekiel and Daniel.
It is Ezekiel who's going to tell you the purpose and the power of the ministry of Jesus Christ. Daniel will tell you the results and the time of the results of that ministry. If you would listen here a moment when we begin with Ezekiel. In Ezekiel 1 and 3, the word of the Lord came expressly unto Ezekiel, the priest. The son of Buzi. In the land of the Chaldeans by the river Chebar. And the hand of the Lord was there upon him. Carols, you must understand that in Old Testament language, the hand of the Lord refers to the Holy Ghost. Whenever we say the hand of the Lord was upon him, it's in reference to the Holy Ghost. This can be compared with Matthew 12 and 28 when he begins to say but if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God and the kingdom of God is coming to you the hand of the Lord we can also compare it in Luke, the 11th chapter, <clears throat> and the 20th verse, notwithstanding, in the 11th chapter and the 20th verse, but if I with the finger of God, do you see it? I'm just proving to you that the hand of the Lord is the Holy Ghost. But if I with the finger of God cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God is come unto you. And what is the kingdom of God? The righteousness, joy, and peace. Where? In the Holy Ghost. So back to Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord was upon him. The Holy Ghost was moving him. And I looked. And behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud and fire enfolding, not unfolding, enfolding itself. And the brightness was about it and out of the midst thereof, the colors of amber out of the midst of the fire. And as much as that is not the text today, I want you to understand points of the text. Firstly, the hand of the Lord refers to the Holy Ghost. I gave you the two witnesses, Matthew 12 and 28 and Luke 11 and 20. There's another witness I will give you on the hand of the Lord, the Holy Ghost. It is when King Belshazzar got out of his place and took the holy vessels of God and a finger came out of heaven and wrote, Mini, mini, take your farson. Thou art weighed in the balance and found wanting or found coming up short. The hand of the Lord, the finger of God, is the Holy Ghost. Secondly, I looked and behold a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud. The great cloud refers to the presence of God. The great cloud is God's presence where he tabernacled over the Ark of the Covenant. The great cloud is the mysterious God. I saw a whirlwind. 
When we speak of the whirlwind, we speak of, ladies and gentlemen, Jesus Christ in ministry. Don't miss it. The whirlwind refers to Jesus Christ in ministry. I saw the ministry of Jesus Christ. And it was coming out of the north. Ladies and gentlemen, he looked beyond Jerusalem north. And Brother Terence, north of Jerusalem is a city called Galilee. Ezekiel saw Jesus in ministry. And what you have to understand, that God wants you to make sense of what you've been going through. It's been for the ministry. He is preparing you to minister. It has been in a cloud. But if the cloud is God, it has been created or stirred by the hand of the Lord, the Holy Ghost. And this world win. Is Jesus Christ in ministry. Ezekiel continues with his visions, and his visions will point out that the Lord Jesus Christ first, Tyrone. First, James chose his followers. Now, Ernest, why is that significant? The Lord Jesus Christ, Emmett, chose us by hand. I can't tell you why he chose Youngstown. I'm sure when he did it, it threw the devil way off. He couldn't imagine God using Youngstown as a headquarters. But oh, shot, Lord Jesus. Lord, when I said that, I saw the prayer tower. Oh. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. I, I'm seeing it now. It's just getting larger and larger. It's coming up out of the ground, and it's just getting larger and larger and beginning to dominate. I see it right while I'm talking to you. Come on, let's worship him a moment here. Some of you are just clapping. That's not worship. Worship him. Just worship him. Just begin to say hallelujah. Praise God. We love you, Lord. We honor your name and your presence. Ooh, yes. And so, his ministry was to choose his disciples by hand. Don't miss it. Not whosoever will, let him come. Not this now. Not this. Let him come and be saved. Yes, let him come and be delivered. But he chose 12 men who could stand the pressure. Now, have you been through anything this year? Have you been through anything this year? I'm not talking about church. I'm talking about your own personal life, in your mind, in your spirit, in your home. Have you noticed that even in your family, some of you who have children that are old enough to have their own families, have you noticed that somehow their families have been under attack over and over and over and you're prayed and you're trying to get them delivered you are delivered in your house but the devil knows you're not delivered as long as a family member is not delivered don't you see it the hand of the Lord are you following this Betty the hand of the Lord remember is the first thing God had me talk about in this message the first thing that appeared was the hand of the Lord 
before we have any howling winds, the hand of the Lord. Before we see lightning, there was the hand of the Lord. Maybe you got it. He is saying everything that you have gone through has been directed by Now this ministry is coming up out of the north. And the Lord chooses 12 disciples, handpicks them. For what? For the great Christ ministry. Sharon, you got it? The great Christ ministry. Not Christ is. Christ. They were handpicked for the great Christ's ministry. The Lord knew what he was going to do. And Daniel knew when, but Ezekiel didn't. So the vision continues. He took the twelve. And began to go throughout the country. The first thing you will hear. Casting out devils. The ministry of Jesus Christ dictates that first things first, cast out the devil. And the only way you can do it, you've got to be the stronger man of a strong man's house. Do you see it? Many of us are waiting for the devil to come in here to practice on him. No, 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 no. This is the stronger house. Yes. That scripture says that the only way that the devil moves is when a stronger man. Yes. You are to go to a strong man's house, a demonic house, as a stronger man. They cast out devils. The ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ began to pull down creeds, false doctrines. The ministry of Jesus Christ rebuked. The ministry of Jesus Christ chastened. The ministry of Jesus Christ exhorted. Then, the ministry of Jesus Christ would break up about every funeral at Saul. Somebody said, a funeral's going. Jesus said, let's go break it up. I love it. The funeral breaker upper. Jesus would take his men, Cecil, and break up a funeral. And the quickest way to break up a funeral is to get the man in the coffin to get up. Get to break it up. No demon stays when a dead man comes back to life. You hear? You miss what I said. When you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the demon will leave you there. He will tempt you to come back to his house. But if you stayed in Christ, he'd leave you alone. He's not crazy. Don't you see what I'm saying? This was the ministry of Jesus Christ. Now, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, the ministry of Jesus Christ signifies God in the ministry. Or in the Old Testament, Charles, what I taught you at the beginning, I come back and tell you, you will notice Old Testament scripture, God in the world wins. The world when I told you was Jesus Christ in ministry. So God in Jesus Christ ministry. Are you following me? I cannot give you a more important scripture in the New Testament than that that is found in Corinthians I give you so very often. God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. 
Now, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, Ezekiel makes very plain what the work of the Lord was. I, I, I feel that one of the major reasons why we're having problems all over the world that many of us do not know what we're doing. Have you ever seen a problem or a messy house and don't know where to start? <laughs> and the average person, the average person, the average person, what you say? You know, I say things wrong and y'all laugh and that's good because I want you to. But do you know I'm very serious? That when your house is so tore up that every room's a mess that you don't know where to start what he just said is where I'm going you won't start it's just too discouraging so I said I'm gonna pick this up and put it in the drawer but the drawer is a mess are you following me? I'm going to sweep the floor, but your broom is filthy. <laughs> you don't know where to start. Jesus is pointing out to us that we have been in like manner. We have seen the world in chaos. We have seen the devil taking over every area. We have seen the devil seemingly in charge of the world. We have been called. They have told us we have the Holy Ghost. We have heard greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. We know that we have power but don't know where to start. What do I do? Do I sit here in Mount Calvary? Or do I go to Biafra? Do I sit here? Or do I go to Liberia? Just follow me. Do I sit here or should I go and join a mission? There's something in me that wants to do the will of the Lord. I don't want to be called a sitter downer. God was in Christ. Christ was in the whirlwind. What did he do? The hand of the Lord was upon him, the Holy Ghost. The whirlwind came after the hand of the Lord was there. The Holy Ghost created the whirlwind. The Holy Ghost went before it. Then as the Holy Ghost went, then Jesus Christ in ministry came. After him came chosen disciples. Remember, a disciple not only means a follower, but the words I really prefer, surely, I want you to remember this, it means a student or a pupil, a learner. His students came, his pupils came. <clears throat> now we arrive, and Ezekiel tells you this in visions, and I'm just stepping you through here. He gives to us the work of the Lord. Why did Jesus Christ come? The ministry of Jesus Christ was, as the Lord, to reestablish faith in the earth. In case you have missed it, what I often do in ministry is wait till I get to the climax to open up the parallel after I've taught you and you understand it. But truthfully, all you got to do is walk through this message in a few moments. When I get to what you call a climax, I'm going to explain to you last first. And that the last must do the ministry they did at first. And I'm giving you the outline that the Lord gave to me to give to you. Mm -hmm. 
You have to clearly know the word. The ministry of Jesus Christ came, son, not just to heal the sick. That's part of it. Not just to bless you with a dollar in a house. That's another part. Not just to wash your sins away. But the ministry of Jesus Christ came to reestablish faith in the earth. The people had lost faith. They had become confused in faith. They could not believe in faith. They couldn't see the faith. He asked the question, when I return, will I find faith in the earth? So the work of the Lord was to do what? To reestablish faith in the earth. Jerome, that's why you hear God say, in Jesus, remember, believe me. Or you'll hear him say, have faith in God. And to the other people, they'll say, well, if you're not going to believe me as a person, believe me for the very work's sake. But he keeps preaching faith. 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 This is not positive thinking. Positive thinking is an excellent philosophy espoused by Norman Vincent Peale and greatly adorned in language characteristic to a scholar by the name of Robert Schuller. That's philosophy. Excellent philosophy. Bishop, if Brother Schuller was at standby, would you go here on the front row, back somewhere? I tried to get there. I think he's an excellent motivator. I think he's an excellent motivator. Did you hear me? What I want you to understand is that when we deal with faith, faith will move mountains. Are you with me? What's our girlfriend's name in Toledo at that church? That's who I'm talking about. Pat says something to me that was outstanding. She said, you know, Bishop, I was looking at that scripture on faith as a grain of mustard seed. Either she or her girlfriend once said it. As a mustard seed, and she said, we were at a, a dinner table with my brother Winans, another group, and I listened to everybody I could listen to. And she said, you know, when we talk about faith as a grain of mustard seed, we usually talk about the quality of it. She said, but I believe the Lord was also saying that if you take that mustard seed and plant it, that as a little seed, you can't do great works because you don't know how, but if you plant that and let it grow, I loved it. I loved it. Let that faith mature. <laughs> Jesus said, have faith in God and nothing shall be impossible. Somebody asked me the, uh, today, Bishop, how in the world do you preach under so much pressure? Pressure! When God gives you a word, either God is right or is wrong. I'm in the camp, yea, let God be true, and every man a liar. When God said you won't lose a hair on your head, and what you have lost, you will recover. I believe every word he said by myself as long as I'm standing on the word the word will hold you up in the fire in the water in the valley on the mountain in the air as long as you stay on the word the word will hold you up so he comes to reestablish ladies and gentlemen brothers and sisters what is the purpose for the gospel then the gospel comes to prepare the way for the Holy Ghost and his working. 
to preach the gospel, to preach Calvary, to preach the Son of God, to preach that God was that Son, to preach that a virgin conceived, to preach his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, to preach Calvary is simply to cause you to have faith in a God that can contain infinitum. How do you take infinity and put it into spermatozoa and fertilize the egg of a woman and all of God? God is in a seed, a speck of sperm. How can God, who the heavens can't contain, and the earth cannot support, and the east and west cannot run far enough to span him? How does this God? Come, spermatozoa, not plural. <laughs> just, 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 just take your pencil if you got one now. Just make a dot. Sperm's more, smaller than that, and that's God. Come on and worship Him. The purpose of the gospel is to prepare the way for the Holy Ghost and his working. Keith, have you missed this? Get a hold to it. To preach Jesus, we are telling people there's a power in the Holy Ghost and you've got to prepare for its work. The Holy Ghost, the majority of us get in the Holy Ghost, or we call it getting into the Spirit, in church on Sunday, reeling and rocking. We do not know how to be in the Holy Ghost in our business. If you would get in the Holy Ghost in your business, you'd be a millionaire. Learn let the Holy Ghost. Hear me, somebody. So, ladies and gentlemen, you might want to put it this way now. Where the Spirit is to go, the gospel must go first. You can have no miracles without the Spirit. So where the Spirit is to go, someone must first say it out loud. Say it louder. Say it louder. Someone must first Preach the gospel. Now you're wondering why you've had trouble? Because you're a gospel preacher. Yes. So I said, well, Pastor, I've never been called, honey. You're a preacher here. you preaching. You're a living epistle, seen and read. And the reason you're having trouble, every time you went on your life, you never. every time you went on your job, you didn't even know it. A group of people were saying, I love to see them coming. I never tell them, but there's something about their life that tells me their God is God. I never told them, but when they come here, it looks like everything is calm and easy. And when they're absent, I just never can tell them that. I, I, I just don't understand. I haven't shared this with a saint. So I'm going to go all around it, but you'll get the message. We have saints that are working in places that are educational, that are political, and I'll just leave it right there, where supposedly they're not permitted to hardly mention Jesus, God, because of their job. 
follow me so far? I got a note by way of, and their superior officer, who is overall, sent me a note and said, I, I'm just a little discouraged about the member from your congregation because I really expected them to direct more of these students or pupils or political arena or those that are not supposed to preach Jesus. He said, I expected them to find a way to get them into Mount Calvary. He said, I just expected Mount Calvary. It, it, it just had to be a part of them that they would have had to speak about Jesus and told somebody to meet me outside. Are you following me? Now, if I could tell you how high that came from. <laughs> That's, they didn't talk about smoking, drinking, lying, cheating. They just talked about them trying to go by the law and by the book. And What'd you say? Yes. They just expected them to preach. Now, you're in here right now, and you know what I'm talking about. So I do want you to tell the Lord, every one of you now, I won't be caught in that tomorrow. Come on, get your finger up there. I won't be caught in that tomorrow. I promise you, just give me a leading. I'm going to preach to somebody. They're expecting you. Do you see it? They're expecting you. Where the spirit is to go, the gospel must go first. We've got to send preaching. I know what I'm talking about. This week alone, I've been preaching in Illinois, in Missouri, in Ohio. Arthur came to Illinois, I'm sorry, to Missouri, and showed up in the back. He didn't go with me, but he happened to be there. I'm not sure he really came to see me, but anyway, he, uh, but he showed up and uh, came back for one more. Bishop, can I help you? And, He'll tell you how the place was packed, large church. And I just got finished preaching the text, and God had the people rejoicing up on their feet, just about all of them, all in the balcony and on the floor, just rejoicing. And I walked out, still in the anointing of the Holy Ghost, and young preachers came back in their 20s and 30s, and some of the older ones, and they crowded me, talked to me a moment. And Arthur said to him, I'm Arthur Thompson. Shook their hands. And I was still under the anointing. I was standing there. And they said, Bishop, we just can't believe this service. And Art said, it's like this every week. And I saw something. All of those preachers turned to him saying, tell us more. Your mouth. And Arch kept telling them more until I had to shut them up. <laughs> now, Art doesn't know this. When he left, I, I, I caught a plane and stayed home, and he was still there. And, um, but the minister said to me, that young minister that was in that room, I said, what minister? They said he has to be a minister. They said he has to be. They said just to listen to him speak. He said in the way he spoke about you, he has to be very close to you. They said you could just feel. You could just feel the connection. 
ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, where the spirit goes, the gospel must first be preached. Now you're getting what I'm talking about, huh? What I'm really saying is, if you believe that Ella Newman is going to be called of God and to be used in a spiritual venture, you brothers got to be the forerunners and preach and tell them the spirit's on the way. The miracles that God's getting ready to do is going to happen here in the next three days. Are you following me? That's God's plan. Our problem is the folk that go out want to try to do miracles and it's not time. You're to preach the gospel. You're not to try to be everything to everybody. Just do what you're supposed to do. The Missourians had a thing. They wanted me to stay on Saturday, and I couldn't stay, and they invited uh, um, District Elder Willie Ellis to come up. And their theme was, there's a shout breaking out. And they had a nice theme for them, a shout breaking out. And what I thought, listen to me carefully, I was felt led of the Lord, and I thought, Greatly, I could deal with the thing. Shout breaking out would be from Chronicles, and it would deal with the Ark of the Covenant when it returned. That a shout broke out, and when you talk about the Ark of the Covenant, I am home. But Saturday, I knew would be a great day for them in shouting, etc. And they had been praising the Lord while I was there Thursday and Friday. But I didn't touch that thing. I felt led to leave that so District Elder Ellis could adequately deal with shout. I didn't feel that was my area. I felt that that should be a Saturday night. Are you getting the message what I'm saying? You have to learn to move in your area. And you have to also learn not to put a period where you're supposed to put a comma. Ask somebody, did you get there? Okay. If you can just learn to be used in the ministry that the Lord has sent you, you'll be effective. Now, I think I have laid the groundwork, and I just want to close out the words from there. I want you to see here that Ezekiel brings to our attention that the whirlwind is coming from the north. And the only way it could come, the hand of the Lord went before it. Look at it now. Darren, I just said, and made it very plain, the spirit is to go. If the spirit is to go, the gospel must go first. But elder, before the gospel can go, we have to have the hand of the Lord. Do you see it? The hand of the Lord is the Holy Ghost. He moves before us and does what? Comes after us. We are in the gospel. We are preachers of the gospel. We are sandwiched in the Holy Ghost. The only reason why you're where you are. The Holy Ghost called you out here. The Holy Ghost said, step out on this water. The Holy Ghost said, go for it. Have you forgotten that the Holy Ghost called you to this ministry? And the Holy Ghost put you in your business. And the Holy Ghost called you across the waters. And the Holy Ghost called you from one church to this church. It was the Holy Ghost that went before you. Then you came. You now were handpicked by Jesus himself. You are a hand-picked disciple. God's got this thing so worked out that we've got somebody for everybody. We've got somebody that if you're in business, we've got somebody that can learn how to operate in business. A lot of people lose their ability to operate for God. You have to learn how to operate in business business. Do you hear me? You've got to learn that, that it is not 
wise to always go around saying, I'm a preacher, I'm a preacher, I'm a preacher. Introduce me as evangelist. Introduce me as preacher. That's the wrong way. Yeah. I told one of the saints the other day, uh, I, I saw something uh, on it. I said, look, stop. Stop having folk call you evangelist. You're not an evangelist. Uh, listen to me. Uh, somebody, somebody, their folk will call you different things. I said, stop. You know I'm going to tell you to your face. That's not the way to go. That's not the way to do this. I'm, I'm talking about a married person uh, when I told stop that. Uh, so listen to what I'm saying to you. You sometimes hinder your own work. If God wants to call you Debbie Cheatham and wants you to speak, then you go somewhere and speak. And somebody said, this girl's really a preacher. You sit with the greatest charm and finesse. Oh, no, 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 no. I just came to speak. And if God uses you in a mighty way, just say like that. Oh, no, no, no. I just, I just. If you lay your hand on the sick and they recover, don't go out and get yourself a robe. You're going to alienate folk. Stay dressed up. Stay pretty. Stay, do you follow what I'm saying? This collar will alienate people. I'm dressed like this for a reason. But I don't go everywhere in this collar. Very seldom do I put it on. It will alienate people. Do you hear what I'm saying? You have to learn how not to get caught in titles uh, and just say well i'm just here to speak and just whatever you want me to do and let the lord use you if you got that message shout hallelujah, hallelujah. brothers and sisters uh, so the bible said that jesus christ uh, came forth and began to lead a people the people he began to lead were his chosen disciples he began to root up and tear down he began to bring to naught. He began to show his godness. He began to show his power. He broke up funerals. He healed all manner of diseases. He gave light in dark places and then declared, I'm going to make me a city. This is what he said. I'm going to make a city and it will be my city. So that's the city of God. Idora Park is not the city of God. Uh, Idora Park is just a location uh, where many of the buildings uh, to God's glory shall be erected. Uh, the city of God is spiritual, not natural. Uh, he said he would create a city uh, and would set it on a hill. Uh, and he said that this city would give light to darkness. Uh, he said it, uh, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, uh, look how foolish the devil is. Uh, now I'm going to tell you this, and I'm off the radio now, uh, but I'm going to tell you personally, and then later I might put it in an interview. I'll see how the Lord leads me. Um, but the city of God, uh, Deacon, you know we've been using that term uh, way before we ever thought about buying Idora Park. Uh, it's written in all of our annuals. It's written um, in our business meetings. Um, we've been calling it City of God. Um, we believe that God was going to blend us with other Christians throughout the city. Um, they were not just to be black, white and black, rich and poor. We believed and preached um, that God was going to bring in um, men and women from different places to put them on his team. Um, don't you remember that preaching? Um, that's been going on for 10 years I've been talking about this. This is nothing new. God said the first building that you shall build in the city of God shall be Calvary Towers. He said this, ladies and gentlemen, way back at the turn of the 80s, you shall build Calvary Towers. It will be the first building in the city of God. Uh, don't you see it? Somebody said, well, nothing's gone on yet in the city of God. Nothing but weeds uh, and overlooking. Uh, we can be so dumb. Uh, that Calvary Towers is built just like he said as the first building of the city of God. Uh, and now I see the prayer tower coming out of the dust. Uh, and God gave us a word. Uh, when you build the tower, you will pay cash for it. Uh, it's time to praise the Lord.
glory to God. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, uh, as the Lord began to go forth and uh, began to preach and began to uproot and began to establish and began uh, to recreate faith in the earth, uh, the Bible says, and don't you dare miss this, uh, that the gospel age, ladies and gentlemen, was coming forth. Uh, and the Bible tells us that the true gospel, that seed, was given to men by Jesus Christ. It is in the 13th chapter of Matthew that a sower went forth to sow. He gave the seed in that same chapter. Jesus said, and the seed is the word. It was Jesus who gave to men the living word. It was Jesus who showed himself alive after his funeral uh, with many uh, infallible, unquestionable, undeniable proofs. Uh, it is Jesus that has shown us uh, that terror cannot stand uh, in the sight of faith. Uh, it is Jesus that has taught us that death cannot hold down a believer. Uh, it is Jesus that has declared uh, that defeat cannot um, become the Lord um, over the victors. Um, it is Jesus who has declared, um, I am greater in you um, than your trouble. I, I'm greater in you than death. Um, I'm greater in you than the grave. Um, you need to recollect and remember everything you have gone through, Jesus has brought you through. Um, you need to recollect and remember, every time you thought you were going down, Jesus picked you up. You need to recollect and remember, every time you got discouraged, Jesus encouraged your heart. You need to recollect and remember, every time you sinned and came short of the glory of God, it was by the blood of Jesus that you were forgiven. Now you come to a little stream and feel like you can't get over. You've been here before. And this time, if you've been through the Red Sea once, you ought to shout this time all the way. Come on and praise him. Let me take this a little bit further. I'm almost finished. Here's what I want you to see. And so the gospel was given to men by Jesus Christ, who was the sower. That was the true gospel, son. That was the apostolic teaching. James, are you hearing me? That was the apostolic teaching. Listen here, Elder Oliver. There was a time when everyone in Christianity baptized in Jesus' name. Did you hear me? Everyone in Christianity baptized in Jesus' name. The history books will bear me out. There was a time when everyone who was filled with the Holy Ghost believed you had to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. There was a time that if we sinned, we had an advocate, Jesus Christ. And we believe that if we confess our sins, he was faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we believed in confession. But the Bible said that, ladies and gentlemen, was the pure gospel. That was what you often hear the old preacher call the unadulterated gospel. And so, brothers and sisters, that prevailed. Uh, but you must never forget, uh, wherever you have uh, an original, uh, you will always uh, have uh, an imitation. Uh, where there is a genuine, uh, or I can hear the old saints say the genuine, uh, you will always find uh, the what? Uh, artificial. Uh, you got to hear me today. Uh, wherever you will find truth, uh, you will always find uh, falsity or a lie trying to come up. So what happened to the church that was committed to the hands of stoutward men and 
godly men and righteous men. Uh, the Bible said while men slept, uh, the enemy came and uh, they slept on this thing. Uh, they began to sleep uh, on dress standards. Uh, they began to sleep uh, on moral codes. Uh, they began to sleep uh, on Morgan David. Uh, they began to sleep uh, on uh, Thunderbird. Uh, they began to sleep uh, on Jack Daniels. Uh, they went to sleep, brothers and sisters. Uh, and while men slept, uh, the enemy came in uh, and began to sow terrors uh, among the wheat. Uh, until we did not know which was right and which was wrong, uh, which was true and which was false, uh, which one is the uh, original uh, and which one is the imitator. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the Bible said uh, that after the enemy did his dirt, you got to get the rest of that scripture, the Bible said, while men slept, the enemy came, so tears among the wheat, and here's what I want you to see, and went away. He left you fighting one against the other, and he's the one that created the fight, created the disturbance. And so, brothers and sisters, God got a hold to a man by the name of Daniel. Daniel saw the saints that they were losing control. Uh, Daniel saw uh, that there was a great beast rising, uh, and this great beast represented uh, a kingdom that would stand against the kingdom of God. Uh, Daniel uh, records the sight uh, of the vision of this Gentile ruler, uh, and he began, began to talk about this great uh, Gentile kingdom uh, that now swallows up the church uh, and the church becomes a part uh, of a uh, Gentilian kingdom. Uh, are you following it? Uh, the church now is bought by the Gentiles uh, and the church uh, is owned uh, by the Gentiles and they are not simply those that are not Jews uh, but in the root form it's by the heathens. Uh, the heathens now uh, ran the church, and he who controls the church will control the school. Uh, never forget it. Um, you give me a country, uh, somebody said, what kind of educational system do they have? Uh, is it religious? All I want to know is what kind of church do they have? Uh, it's as the church goes, and so goes the nation. Uh, and a nation who's gone is not the Lord. Uh, that nation will soon be destroyed. And so, ladies and gentlemen, the church got into the control of the artificial preachers and the liars. The church lost its savor. So now we begin to look and we see the kingdom, the same kingdom that the Gentile king saw. We began to see it rising up uh, and dominating the land. Uh, we saw the kingdom from one head uh, down to a ten federated nation uh, shown in the toes. Uh, but when we get down to the feet, uh, it's nothing but a clay kingdom. Uh, and it can be destroyed. Uh, it can come down. Uh, so... Uh, when Ezekiel saw these visions, uh, he didn't understand the time. Uh, he didn't know what it was going to be about. Uh, but I heard the Lord saying, uh, there's going to come an end to the matter. Uh, there's going to come an end to where Satan is running your home. Uh, there's going to come an end to where Satan uh, is troubling your mind. Uh, there's going to come an end uh, to where Satan has the audacity to come into the church of the living God and to attack a person with cancer. There's going to come an end to it. Uh, when you wake up and understand uh, I am a child of God uh, and together we are the army of the Lord. Uh, lift your finger and declare we're the army of the Lord. Uh, you didn't sound like it. Say it again. 
You don't sound like it. Say it again. Say it again. Now listen to what I'm saying. If you are the Lord's army, you've got weapons that the demons don't know about. If you are the Lord's army, you can call on angels to come and fight. If you are the Lord's army, you got to say like David. you got to get fed up with the devil. And you got to go to the valley that Goliath is standing in. He's standing on territory that belongs to God. He's cursing out of a mouth that was created by God. God, he is breathing a hatred by the breath of God. You've got to look him in the face and say, how dare you? How dare you? Come on here. How dare you? How dare you? You don't sound angry enough. If you're going to work with the devil, you've got to get angry. How dare you? I said, if you're going to work for God, you got to get angry angry at the devil how dare you you? defy the army of the living god we are the lord's army we are the lord's army oh clap your head and praise yes brothers and sisters I, i want you to get a hold to what god is saying to you today So the enemy came in, uh, and he's beginning to dominate. Uh, But I want you to hear what I say to you. Uh, I say to all, uh, what we need is the Holy Ghost. Uh, We need to free the Holy Ghost. Uh, Somebody's saying, but the enemy is all around us. Uh, But I heard the Lord say, uh, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, uh, The Spirit of the Lord uh, shall lift up a standard against him. Um, Thus saith the Lord, um, I heard the Lord say uh, that if you call me, uh, I'll be there. I heard the Lord say uh, that if you get in trouble uh, by doing what I told you to do, uh, you will not be confounded. Uh, I heard the Lord say uh, if you go out, uh, and the devil come in, I'll never leave you. I heard the Lord say, if you give me all you have and don't have enough to give the man downtown, I'll make a way out of no way. I heard, I heard the Lord say, if you're in trouble seven times, I'll be there. I'll never leave you, for lo, I am with you always. He said, lo, or let me put it this way, look at here, I'm there. Look in the midst of your storm, I'm there, just praise him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And so, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I'm he said, Daniel, uh, tell them for me uh, and cause them to understand. Uh, Daniel, uh, tell them what do you see? Uh, he said, I beheld uh, till the throne were cast down uh, and the ancient of days did sit. Uh, what are you saying, Daniel? Uh, I saw the kings uh, that were dominating uh, in Nebuchadnezzar's day. Uh, I saw Rome, I saw Assyria, I saw the Greeks and I, I saw the empires, I, I saw them begin to crumble, I, they got off their throne, I, and the ancient of days, I, he that is older than old, I, I saw him appear and sit on the throne, I, his garments I, were white as snow, I, and his hair I, was like lamb's wool, I, and his throne uh, was like a fiery flame. Uh, it was so brilliant uh, that it looked like it was fire. Uh, when you looked at it, you couldn't hardly behold it uh, because of this majesticness, uh, this majesty. Uh, and so, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we said, and I beheld, uh, 
and because of the voice uh, of the great words. Uh, do you see it? Uh, he said the people learned to speak the word. Uh, they learned the power was in the word. Uh, it was by the voice uh, of the great words uh, that I heard which the horn spake. Uh, yeah, Lord, uh, I beheld uh, that the beast was slain. Uh, and the body destroyed uh, and given to a burning flame. Um, and then he said, uh, until the ancient of days uh, came uh, and judgment was given uh, to the saints uh, of the Most High God. Uh, and the time came uh, that the saints did what? Uh, possess the kingdom. Uh, well, 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 uh, God told me to tell you, uh, that the time, uh, yeah, I keep looking at my watch. Uh, you don't usually see me do that in preaching. Uh, but God's got a time that this message has got to go through. Uh, he timed it before the foundation of the world. Uh, and when that time comes, uh, we have arrived at the end of an era and the end of the matter. Uh, and it's almost time. Uh, yeah, yeah, Lord. Uh, God's got a plan here. Uh, I know somebody uh, just thinks uh, that this is a lot of uh, shamrock, whatever that would be. Uh, but I want you to get a hold to this. Uh, this is the word of the Lord uh, before the foundation of the world. Uh, he had already decreed uh, that on April the 30th, uh, let God be God. Uh, I asked him uh, right while I was preaching in this message. Uh, I began to hunt books. Uh, I began to look up dates. Uh, I studied history uh, for this one message because uh, I just couldn't stand them what he was talking about. Uh, on the 30th uh, of April, it just wouldn't make sense. Uh, I went back and studied, studied George Washington. and I went back and I studied uh, uh, the beginning of another day. Uh, yeah, Lord, uh, hot some more shaka. Glory to heaven, uh, but it wasn't clicking. Uh, I asked God in the message again. Uh, I said, while I'm preaching, Lord, uh, I'm up in this heaven with you. Uh, reveal to me the significance of the time. Uh, he said, add numbers. Uh, I said, fourth month. Uh, he said, add numbers. Uh, I said, 30th day. Uh, he said, but a zero is a zero. Uh, four plus three plus zero is seven. Uh, he said, it's over now. Uh, it's over now. Uh, and if you can just hear what God is saying, uh, it's not talking about foreclosure. God's already given us victory. I just know it in my spirit. That's not what I'm talking about. But what God is preaching tonight, the thing you've been going through, it's over. What God is preaching tonight, the heaviness that you have bore, it's over. What God is saying, the faith that you have been wrestling to hold on to, it's over, and the dream that God gave you, in a few minutes, uh, you will be able to step into it. Uh, God has given his word, uh, and he won't take it back. Oh, clap your hand and pray. Come on and praise him. I want somebody to shout hallelujah. Let somebody else shout glory. But let everybody just start to break into a praise. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. 